searching the aisles for the fountain of youth. And I think I found it, black beans. Black beans have more antioxidants than any other bean. And guess what? Antioxidants can help you keep looking young. I'm gonna be using black beans to make my famous Chipotle black bean burger. I'm Michael Williams, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Welcome to the kitchen. In ancient Greece, public officials were elected by picking beans. The person who picked the white bean got the job. Today, we're electing to go crazy with black beans in my Chipotle black bean and beet burger. It's gonna be amazing. Let's get cooking. Now, when it comes to making a bean burger, it's really, really important to make sure that you cook the beans yourself. The reason being is because we want to make sure we end up with a nice dry bean before we start mixing. If you go with canned, it's really hard to get all that liquid off the beans. So I'm going to run through how to cook your own beans. Of course, you buy them from the bulk aisle. Super cheap and you know what, they're about a third of the price of buying canned so well worth your time and effort to learn how to get into the rhythm of cooking beans from scratch. Once you bring them home, just think about it, think about it ahead. Tomorrow I want to make some Chipotle black bean burgers. Okay, let's get our beans soaking right before bed, perfect time. Wake up in the morning, these have been soaking all night. Important to get a little bit of salt in the soaking water, that's a little bit of controversy on there but absolutely important, it helps break down the skins and make them tender. Once you've soaked them, drain them off and we cook them. Now, I've got some that I've done up ahead of time here. We've cooked these guys up already as you can see. Black beans, also known as black turtle beans. Now, every bean's different. These guys cook the quickest though. It's about an hour, hour and 15 minutes tops. And uh, as you can see, I added in some aromatics. I cooked them along with garlic, uh, onion, a little bit of ginger, just to get some extra flavor going in there. Fantastic. Now, I also salted the water a little bit again. Not too heavy, just enough so that we get salt into the beans. Really important steps there. So we're gonna come back to our cooked beans. We've got a couple things to do before we get into to them. Let's get our food, presser, food processor rolling here. I've got some carrots and beets. Now I'm going to get these peeled and we're going to run them through the food processor just to get them grated. What we're going to do is we're actually going to puree half of them and leave half of them whole so that we can get some you know varying texture in our burger. Really important step. Okay so in terms of our beet here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the top and the bottom off. I've already scrubbed it really well. There's no need to peel beets. So we'll just cut the top and the bottom off. Maybe just take a peek if there's any blemishes, anything that needs to be tidied up. Otherwise, it's good to go. So there we go, that's ready to go into our food processor. So I'm gonna fire this up. Of course, I gotta cut the tops off the carrots. And then this goes right into the chute and I'm just gonna push it through. And these are going to add a lovely texture to our burger as well as the unmashed black beans. So there we go. First steps done. Let's chop some onions now. What I want to do is I want to saute a little bit of onion and gar garlic in our frying pan. It's warming up nicely. So I'm just going to chop this onion. As always when I'm cutting onions I start by cutting the top and the bottom off. And that makes life easier when it comes to peeling. Now I'm just going to give this a rough chop, so cut like so, cut like so, and that'll be ready to hit the pan. A little bit of garlic to go with it. So by the way, chipotle comes from the Aztec word for smoked chili. How fitting because it is smoked jalapeno, go figure. We're gonna get lots of garlic in here though because garlic, you, you know, I mean you just you wouldn't survive in Mexico without garlic. I know this since I've been there. Garlic everywhere. Garlic goes, you know, in abundance into so many dishes. I love this. This this right here, this is the building blocks of cooking. It always starts with onions and garlic. I love it. So many savory savory dishes, you know, they, they need that. They need the, the building blocks, the fundamental flavors of the onions and the garlic. So we'll just give these a little bit of a chop as well. And then we're ready to get them in the pan. And the goal here is to saute these a little bit to build some sweetness. So we want to get a nice caramelized brown on our onions and our garlic. We've got some heat building there now. 
Let's scoop these up and get them in. Oh yeah, nothing like that sound of sizzle. Action as soon as it hits the pan, love it. All right, so let's continue on here. We need a mixing bowl to start building everything we're putting together. So we've already shredded our beets and our carrots. I'm going to go ahead and get those in the mixing bowl. Now we're done with this attachment, the shredding attachment, and we're gonna get the blade into our food processor so that we can really puree about half of uh, uh, the volume that we need for our black beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those black beans in there now. We'll discard the cooked aromatics, the garlic and the ginger and the onion. And we will go ahead and start loading up our food processor. So we're looking for about half the volume here. And now, you know, this, this recipe, making these from scratch, it really comes down to feel. And I'm gonna show you what I mean soon because you just, you just have to kind of work with it. Sometimes there's different levels of moisture in the finished product of the beans. And you know, we're gonna add a little bit of egg to it to help bind it. And then the last step is to kind of bring everything together and adjust the, you know, the dryness and the consistency with some rice flour, which by the way, is brilliant for vegetarians. Rice and beans complete the perfect protein, a complete protein. Okay, so let's get this pureed now. I'm gonna fire it up. And I might need to start and stop a couple times and kind of, you know, brush the sides down, make sure everything gets into the path of the blade. Let's take a, take a peek in here. It's coming together nicely. And you know, I love this recipe, it's fantastic. As you know, vegetarian diets and vegan diets increase, although this one won't be vegan, you know, why not make your own? Why not learn how to make your own instead of buying one of those expensive, uh, you know, plant-based patties? Let's, let's do it ourselves. I'm always about making things from scratch whenever you can and have fun doing it. Make it an experience, make it mindful, make it fun. Right now, our Onions and garlic are looking great. They have nicely sauteed. There's a little bit of dark color on some of these, which is fine. A little bit of bitterness lends itself to the dish nicely. We've got some sweetness as well. So we'll get that into our mixing bowl. Let's get our mashed beans into our mixing bowl. And we'll get some of those whole beans into the mixing bowl. Next up, all we'll need to do is grab a little bit of egg, season it, and then finish it off with, you know, a little bit of binding action with some rice flour. So let's grab those black beans now, and we'll transfer those into the bowl. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna bring this up here and finish it off. I'm gonna grab those eggs. I'm gonna put two eggs into there. Got a nice beet ring on the counter there. Love it. Better on the counter than on the cutting board, by the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and just get everything incorporated here just after we season. So we're gonna start off with some Himalayan pink salt, cumin, lots of cumin. Cumin and beans, oh yeah, match made in heaven. And I've got some chipotle chili powder here. Now this stuff has a kick, absolutely. So you can be careful with it. Or you could use paprika instead if you wanted to. I was not careful, I had dumped a bit in there, so these are gonna have a kick, which is absolutely fine by me. And as this comes together, it's that paste of the mashed beans that really makes it all bind. And all those wonderful flavors is gonna be awesome. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so rice flour it is. If I need to, I will add some more rice flour. I'm just gonna judge it, and I'll show you exactly how I do that. And I can see that this is still just a little bit wet, so I'm gonna add a little bit more rice flour, and I think we're gonna be good to go. Boom, great, all right. Let us finish mixing that in, and then here's how you do it. Just all you need to do is grab a handful and try and form it, and if it sticks, you know, if, we, if we're able to form a patty, we're good to go as long as it kind of holds together. 
That's all we're looking for. We're going to be back later in the show and I'm going to show you exactly how to pull it all together for our Chipotle black bean and beef burger. But first, we're road tripping. Catch you after the break. Cooking on the Road is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions, an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. 25 years ago, I was doing this very job for Rob Gailey on Gailey Farms, separating the rows of carrots before their tractor came and picked them up. Rob, hey, good to see you again. Long time, good to see you. 25 years, yeah. yeah how you nice been? Doing really well, thanks. Yeah, how are you? Very well. Yeah, so business is good for Gailey Farms? Yeah, a lot of changes, but I mean, it's growing in a positive way. Yeah, yeah, I always see new things popping up for you guys. Your farm stand seems like it's doing amazing. Yeah. Huge distributor here on the island. Tell us a little bit about Gailey Farm. Well, we've had a few changes. All the family is very heavily involved. Yeah. And, you know, my dad still loves his potato thing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's never going to go away. I really am passionate about the berries yeah, and right. the ag tourism stuff. I love your strawberries. Well, thank you, sir. They're amazing. They're thank so you. good. Yeah. And the big one this year that I've gotten into heavy is corn. Okay. So a little bit of research, a uh, couple little failures, but yeah, a lot of learning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I guess it never stops. So life as a farmer is, is just as hard now as it was 100 years ago or just different? Um, you know, technology's changed. Yeah. Um, I'm really advanced in technology. So um, work hard nine months of the year yeah. here um, in Victoria. Yeah. And then my winters, I travel. I go to the US a lot, to California. Right. Learn all the latest technologies and do a lot of studying. Right, so in the off season, you're, you're still busy busy working away in a different way. Well, you have to move forward or yeah. somebody's going to pass you by. It's yeah. the way of all business today. We're in this field of beautiful carrots. As I mentioned, 25 years ago, yeah. I, was, I was out here. I, I, I you, remember, you, I yeah. think you were on the tractor. Yeah. Hurry up, we need to get this row separated. <laughs> yeah, orders yeah. are coming in. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's hard work. May I pull? Oh, oh absolutely. Are these, are these ready to harvest? They are. We're actually picking in here right now on a daily basis. We pick every day. And, um, so these are going to be bunch carrots? These are all bunching carrots. Okay, yeah. and there is a difference, right, between bunching carrots and, you know, the bulk carrots? Well, bulk carrots, you want a bigger size. Is that how you I, clean them? Uh, this is how I clean yeah, them, yeah, because okay. I, I eat out of the field every day. Right on. This is uh, I'm how I eat that. my lunch. That's awesome. A little bit of, this is the most beautiful soil you'll ever see. Yeah. A little it, bit it's, of it's not going to hurt you. It is beautiful and rich, very, mm -hmm. very hearty. So, uh... I'm okay with a little bit of dirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a test field of mine. Mm -hmm. I found a couple new varieties this year, and I brought them here just because they were great going down south. It doesn't always mean they'll adapt to the BC climate. Right. So what you do is a small little trial of a few rows everywhere, and uh, I'm happy with these, but this variety right next to us, um, I think they're gonna be my new big gun next year. Carrots, corn, berries, you're not just limited to that though. You guys are family fun entertainment, you know, with the, the corn maze and everything else. That's what keeps me smiling. Stuff. I just, I love um, the, when the families come here. You know, all my kids, when you go to my house, yeah. their pumpkin pictures when they were children, mm -hmm. still on their wall today. There's something about a child, like when they get that pumpkin and that look in their eye and yeah. that glow, yeah. nothing else will ever beat that. Rob, I gotta say, love the berries. Love the farm market, but I really love the train. This thing's awesome, hit it. Most guys do. We're back in the kitchen, pulling together our Chipotle black bean burger. We're ready to hit the pan. I've got a nice hot pan here, so I'm gonna add some oil, and I really wanna get some nice browning happening on our burger, so let's do that. Let's get a little bit of oil in. You may notice, I didn't even bother cleaning the pan. I don't like to waste effort. Lots of great flavors left in here from when I fried the onions and the garlic. So un in goes the oil, and then in goes the burger, just like so. We should have room. No, not one. We're gonna, we're gonna have to do it in batches. That's okay. Never crowd the pan. You just do what you do. We got four in there. They're gonna start caramelizing, warming up, 
turning into a beautiful creation. But we want to build, we want to build some flavors. I've got some Swiss chard here, which we're going to serve our, our burgers on. So let's get the, our second pan heating up here. Now the beautiful thing about this, the Swiss chard, the rainbow chard, I love it. What I've done here is I've washed it. And as you can see, it's still nice and wet. And we're gonna leave that moisture on it and just toss it into the pan. And that's gonna help steam it and wilt it down. So we don't need to add anything to it. So all I'm gonna do is just gonna chop this up. And just thinking, you know, how's this gonna fit into my mouth? Is it the size you're looking for? If you need to put a couple of extra chops on it, you can. But it should be good just sliced right off. And a lot of people will just take the stems and discard them, but I think they're beautiful. Wonderful, they, they're definitely textured and got a firm, you know, firm bite to them, but that's great. And really makes for a beautiful accent to our dish in terms of garnish. Okay, that's gonna do it. That's gonna go right into our pan. Nothing like induction, heats up so quickly. Get the rest of it in there, that'll do its thing. Now, our burgers are coming along. Let's take a peek. I want to flip one over and see what level of browning we're at. We want to make sure we don't burn them, of course. Really important. Almost. Let it go a little bit longer. In fact, I'm just going to turn it up a touch. So, creme fraiche. Science. It's like a little science experiment in your kitchen. You can take fresh whipping cream in the volume of one cup and add two tablespoons of buttermilk. And then, this is gonna freak some people out, leave it out overnight, 12 hours, 12 to 16 hours. It's a, it's a bit of a flexible window and, and sometimes it needs a little bit more. So we'll add two tablespoons of the buttermilk and what happens is the cultures in the buttermilk start multiplying and building and we end up with this incredible thing called creme fraiche. It's like fresh sour cream. Go figure. So lo loosely wrapped, you want to leave a little bit of oxygen on there. And here's what we end up with. This beautiful, thick, incredible texture. And we're going to use that to garnish our dish. I think we're ready for a flip now. Look at that. So, oh, we lost one there. And this may happen. You know, these guys, they do have a bit of a soft texture. They're going to firm up as they keep cooking. But you notice what I did there. I just reformed it, no problem. I'm noticing my pan's getting a little bit dry here as well, so I'm gonna add just a touch more oil. If you don't have enough oil in the pan, you really you know, run the risk of burning things, so just a slight touch more oil. And then let's give our shard a stir. This is wilting down nicely. Look at all those colors. Shard, like kale, like spinach, fantastic thing to incorporate into your diet. Leafy greens, really, it's hard to get too much of them, so anytime you can start throwing leafy greens into your diet, you're doing yourself a favor. Our shard is ready, and I'm gonna plate it up, in fact, so let's get this on the plates. Look at that, beautiful. Look at all those colors. After I get the greens on there, I'm just gonna kinda sprinkle those juices on the first plate. Little confetti of those stems. Right on. Now, how do you tell when your burgers are done? It's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not like we're cooking chicken here and it's got to get to a certain temperature. We do have our eggs and uh, we want to make sure that we get it to the right temperature. But basically, you can see that these patties have come together, which means that those eggs have kind of, you know, formed and set and we're ready to plate up. So let's do that. I'm going to get one of these. And one of these, and we'll save these guys for another day. So I'm just gonna take that off the heat and let's finish this off right. Got some beautiful creme fraiche. I'm just gonna drizzle this over top everywhere. Make it look pretty. Oh yeah. And with the heat in the Chipotle burger, without, especially with that little slip of uh, Chipotle powder I had, this creme fraiche is gonna do wonders for cooling things down. There you have it folks, Chipotle black bean burger. Are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the Plus. What better way to enjoy a fantastic culinary creation than with a great wine pairing? Jason Hyde from Hester Creek. Welcome to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Chef. So, I gave you the rundown on what I was going to make for you today a chipotle black bean and beet burger, lots of spice happening, cooling it down with a little bit of homemade creme fraiche. What did you decide to pair with our dish today? I brought down a blend from Hester Creek, a character red. 
It's a okay. blend with Merlot, Syrah, yeah. Malbec. Okay. It should pair very, very well the dish. It's uh, got some nice fruity flavors and some nice spicy notes that will complement the chipotle. Nice. Well, let's uh, let, let's have a taste. What do you think? Absolutely. Let's give this a try. I'm excited. So, uh, Pastor Creek's been around for a little while, hey? Yeah, established in 1968, 50 years ago now. 50 years. That's a long time. Yeah, it's very... Uh, so, lots of tradition. Very, very famous for uh, producing very big full-body reds and wines. And oh, that smells amazing. Doesn't that? Wow. I'm getting excited. That is so smooth. I Isn't love it? that. Yeah. Nice flavors. Wow. Okay. So I've got to try my, my burger and, and see how that pairing comes together. So it's got a bit of a kick. Be warned. Mm -hmm. I accidentally dumped in a little bit of extra chipotle chili powder. Now it tastes great with this wine. It pairs really well with the, the flavors, the richness of the, the wine. Yeah. Pairs well with the spices that you've got going on there. There's a great play happening here, absolutely. You know, there's, this is a fairly bold dish, and this is standing up really well. I I, I see the, the kind of chili notes that you were talking about, the spice notes in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The peppery notes. It's a nice, smooth. It complements each other really well. I'm, I'm impressed with it. Better well, than I anticipated. Job well done. So tell us a little bit more about Hester Creek. You know, 50 years. What are what's your best selling wine? Oh, uh, they have several. They have this uh, Trebbiano I brought out today. It's uh, an Italian grape originally. Okay. Uh, brought by the original owner of the winery. Really? Um, 50 years ago. 50 years ago. Yeah. yeah. They have Cabernet Franc that's always done really well for Hester Creek. It's a single varietal. Uh, their flagship red would be the, the the Judge, which is a Bordeaux blend with Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet like Franc. That. that sounds cool. Yeah, all yeah. rise to the Judge. Yeah. Let's uh, bow down to the Judge and drink a glass of wine. Right. This has been incredible. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for I'm inviting gonna, me. I'm going to keep sipping on this and enjoying mm. some of my burger. I'll Check have a out. Bite. Yeah, please do. Check out our website where you'll find details on today's recipe. I'm Michael Williams. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, dinner's better when we eat it together.